Let's add custom recipes and block drops to our mod. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below. With over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. Alright, we find ourselves back in Taylor Jones War and in this tutorial we'll be adding custom recipes as well as custom loot tables to our Minecraft mod. And that is basically going to finally actually have our blocks drop something now in the course of this tutorial the first step is going to be adding the recipes then we'll add sort of an intermediary step that we need so that our blocks actually drop something and then we add the loot tables i will have chapters of course linked in the description below so you can jump to any point that you want do note that the intermediary step for the loot tables is absolutely necessary we will talk about it once well basically get there but first of all the recipes how do recipes work what is going on how can we make basically make custom recipes and it actually as as easy as making a custom data pack because well in this case every minecraft mod is also a data pack or let's say has an associated data pack with it therefore what we're going to do is under resources we're going to right click new directory called data in the data folder we will then make a new directory called tutorial mod or whatever your mod id is and then inside of there we make another new directory called recipe very important recipe and now here we can create the json files for the recipes in this case what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a recipe for getting pink garnet from a pink garnet block right so the nine pink garnets and then also you put the nine pink garnets into a crafting table and get a pink garnet block out of it so for that what we're going to do is in the recipe folder we're going to right click new file called pink underscore garnet dot json and we will also create the other one and that's going to be the pink underscore garnet underscore block dot json the convention usually is that the json file is named after the result of the crafting this is not strictly necessary however that is one of the conventions and while this is sometimes broken that is usually the case now we're going to start with the pink garnet basically we're going to put we're going to be able to put a pink garnet block into any of the crafting slots and then get nine pink garnets out of it how does this look like well i will write this down all of the json files that we're creating in this particular tutorial are of course also available to you down below so you can always double check the description and the github repository so you should be Good to go now this is going to be the crafting shapeless over here for the type we're going to define a category and that category is going to be building in this case i actually think that that does make sense ingredients is going to be a list and that list is going to have one object over here that object is going to be item tutorial mod colon pink underscore garnet underscore block and then after the list over here we're going to have a result object and that result object it's going to look like this it's going to have a count of nine let's see there you go nine and then it's going to have an id and that id is going to be once again tutorial mod and this time pink underscore garnet there we freaking go and that is the first recipe done so this is a shapeless recipe meaning that i can put in the pink garnet block into any slot in the crafting table be it the three by three or the two by two and i will have a pink garnet or rather nine pink garnets as the crafting result that's literally all this is and if you want different ones well then you can also add more ingredients over here to the ingredients list you can change the count right here note that the result is always going to be one item you can't have multiple items as a result that's just a basic sort of limitation of the minecraft crafting system and then we can move on to the pink garnet block. It's going to be a different type of crafting recipe because this one actually is crafting underscore shaped. And that's going to be of category. And we're going to do a miscellaneous right here. So M-I-S-C. Then we define a key. This key is going to be the hashtag. And this hashtag, what does this represent? Well, this represents the item. And that item is tutorial mod colon pink underscore garnet then afterwards we define a pattern over here the pattern is a list of three strings and you will find what this means in just a second we'll also define a result right here once again that has a count in this case the count here is simply going to be one and then we have an id again and that id is tutorial mod colon pink underscore garnet underscore 
block. And now this pattern, what is this? Well, if I fill this up, maybe you will sort of know what this is intuitively. This is obviously a three by three area, meaning this simply represents the crafting table, right? So that is literally what this pattern over here is. And we basically have to define what each of these symbols mean. In this case, we basically say, hey, anywhere where there's a hashtag in this pattern, that means that you should put in a pink garnet there. So we have to fill the entire crafting table with pink garnets, nine of them in total, to get out a pink garnet block. Now that is pretty freaking cool and those are the first two recipes. Now the other two that I want to show you I will actually copy over. Those are also available to you down below and I'll show you a great resource in just a second as well. But first the pink garnet basically blasting and smelting recipes and you can see they are also not too crazy in terms of complexity, right? You see the blasting recipe here is of type of blasting, right? Then we have a cooking time and an experience that you actually define as well. You define what the ingredient is here, raw pink garnet, and then you get out of it a pink garnet, right? And the same thing goes for the smelting. It's almost exactly the same, just the cooking time is obviously increased because smelting usually takes longer than blasting. And you can also see that the ingredients and the pink garnet are the same. Now, as a great resource, what you can do is you can go to the external libraries down here and you want to search for this like wall of fabric yarn and go up like one or two until you find Minecraft Merge and then crazy numbers and all of that. This is what you want to find. And then under the data folder, if we expand this, you can see recipe. And here you have access to every single vanilla recipe that exists in vanilla Minecraft. This is so freaking awesome, right? This includes, you know, things like stone cutting. How does stone cutting work? Go in here. You can copy over the contents of this, change what ingredient you have, change what result you have, and there you go. That's literally as easy as this is. I cannot tell you enough how awesome it is that we basically have access to the entire data folder over here, right? All of the all of the different data packs from Minecraft, including all of the JSON files, that is super useful. And that basically will allow you to do to almost remake any Minecraft recipe that exists in vanilla in your own mod, basically. With the recipes done, let's jump into the game right now and see if it works. And then we're going to proceed from there. So let's see. All right, finally back in Minecraft. And let's first of all, take a look. If I put in pink garnet, as you can see, I can get pink garnet blocks out of it. And the same thing goes in the opposite direction. If I take some raw pink garnet and I start smelting it, you can see absolutely both start smelting. And that is exactly what you want to see, basically, because, well, there you go, a pink garnet here and also a pink garnet here they will automatically be added to the recipe book here as well for both the blasting and the smelting recipes as well as the crafting recipes right here. So that is pretty freaking awesome and that is custom recipes added to Minecraft. But of course we're not done quite just yet because the next thing is we want our blocks to drop something and to actually do this we're first of all going to add two more blocks here in this case. And the reason here is because I want you to also see how ore blocks drop, right? In this case, our pink garnet block and our raw pink garnet block, they would just drop themselves. Very straightforward, understandable. Well, in this case though, I actually want the pink garnet ore block to drop like one raw pink garnet, and I want the pink garnet deep slate ore block to actually drop multiple similar to how copper does it. And to show you those, well, let's add those two blocks. I'll go through this a little bit quicker than I usually do in the last tutorials. So do keep that in mind that I'm going to, I mean, I'm, I don't want to say I'm going to rush this, but you know, something like that. So we're going to basically add this and then we're going to be fine. This is a new experience dropping block in this case. The reason why we're using an experience dropping block for the ore is, well, ore when you mine it usually drops experience. Therefore, we wanted to use that as well. Strength, I think three is fine, requires a tool. And I think that that's going to be okay. And then we can actually just duplicate this. Now, as always, of course, the, all of the code changes here are also available down below. So if you don't want to type this out, you can actually simply go into the GitHub repository and take it from there as well. Let's change the numbers here just a little bit. And then also for the deep slate, We'll add a different sound block group. So this is going to be the block sound group of Deep Slate. I think that that makes a lot of sense because, well, it is Pink Garnet sort of embedded into Deep Slate. It, it does make a lot of sense. Let's add those to the Creative Mode tab as well or the Item group. And that's going to be the Pink Garnet Ore. And then it's going to be the Deep Slate Ore here as well. So those are added there. Awesome. And yes, then it needs all of the different JSON files and stuff like that. 
Translation very straightforward. And then when it comes to the JSON files, I actually literally just copy over the name right here, drag the same thing into the folder and basically change the name there. And I am going to do this for all of the different JSON files. And you can see I can actually do this quite fast. Now, the reason why I can do this so fast is because I've done this. I don't even know. I mean, at this point, I mean, a thousand times that might actually be an understatement. It might actually be way more than that. But uh, yes, I have basically done this a lot of times before. I mean, I've been at it for, I mean, since 116. So, you know, it's, it's, it's understandable that I've done this a lot of times so that I can do this quite fast. But yeah, then we'll add the textures, which are, of course, also going to be available to you. And now we have two more blocks added to the game. Absolutely freaking fantastic. That's going to be totally fine. And with those added, we can finally give them some uh, drops. Let's see. So block drops and loot tables, how do those work? Well, what is very important is that when we look at our blocks right here, all of them have the requires tool method called on their settings. The reason why this is obviously important is that in this case, well, obviously all of our blocks have to have some sort of tool defined for them to properly drop because a pink garnet block or a raw pink garnet block, it doesn't make any sense for them to be mineable with your hand, right? I think that that is very sensible. Now, that is why we have the requires tool method called. However, in order to actually define what tool it needs, we need to add them to a tag. In the highest level overview, a tag is a collection of blocks, items, or other things that are added to Minecraft that have a similar purpose or are somehow grouped together. And those groupings, in this case, are going to be the groupings of blocks mineable with, for example, a pickaxe. You can also define other tools, obviously, right? That, that absolutely also works. But in this case, we're going to define the pickaxe. That happens in the data folder. And not in tutorial mode, but in the data folder, we want to create a new directory called Minecraft. Inside of there, very important that the folder structure is correct. So data, Minecraft, tags. Inside of the tags folder, we want to create a new directory called block. And then inside of the block folder, one last directory called mineable. In this mineable directory, this is where the pickaxe.json file goes. So in the mineable directory, right click new file called pickaxe.json. And this looks kind of like this. We're going to have a replace value and that is going to be false. And then we're going to have a values list right here. And this values list, that is exactly what is going to, well, contain all of the different blocks from your mod that can only be mined with a pickaxe. In our case, it will be tutorial mod colon and then pink underscore garnet underscore block in this case. We can actually duplicate this four times because we also have a raw pink garnet block. We also have a pink garnet ore, right? And we also have a pink garnet deep slate underscore or make sure that there are no spelling mistakes inside of the this tag right here right in the values if there are any typos that can lead to some a pretty uh, you know it can lead to some issues so i just want to mention that beforehand make sure that there is no typos right basically you can literally just go into the mod blocks right you can copy this over and make sure that this is written correctly and you also don't add any blocks that don't exist yet Right, but now what would happen is that all of the different blocks could be mined with a wooden pickaxe. And we're like, no, okay, that is a little bit too far. Maybe we can say, well, you know, maybe the pink garnet block can be mined with it. But the raw one, that one at least needs like iron tools. And maybe the ore also needs iron tools. And maybe the pink, and then maybe the deep slate one, that one actually needs a diamond tool. We can all do that. Now in data, Minecraft tags block, right? Not in the mineable folder, but in the block folder, we want to create a new file. I'm going to call this the needs underscore diamond underscore tool dot JSON. Then we'll do the same thing once again in the block folder. And that's going to be the needs underscore iron underscore tool dot JSON. Now that we already have the pickaxe defined, the actual contents of this look very similar. So what we can simply do is we can simply select all of this, press control C to copy all of it over and control V to paste it into both of them and now just remove the ones we don't want. So in this case, for the diamond one, we only want the, the deep slate ore to be mineable with diamond and above. And when it comes to iron, well, I actually think that the raw and the normal ore, I think both of those should need at least iron tools or above basically to be mined. This will basically leave the pink garnet block to be mineable with a wooden pickaxe as well. And then obviously with any other pickaxe too. And that is the whole idea on how to define this. What I re highly recommend you do is once again to the external libraries, to the merge right here, you can actually go into 
the loot to the tags as well. And that is going to be under blocks here, mineable. So here you can see the four mineables, right? Axe, hoe, pickaxe, and shovel. You cannot make something mineable with a sword. A sword is defined within the sword item class, if I recall correctly. So that is why it doesn't appear here. And then here you can also do a needs and you can see it needs diamond tool, needs iron tool, needs stone tool. So those would be the three different tags where you can add your custom blocks to in order to define what the minimum level is that they need in order to be properly mined. And this will always need to be the case. You always need to do this. And when you actually have done this, now we can add the loot tables. Now, when it comes to the loot tables, I will be copying those over. Now, you might be saying, I, I know that a lot of people are like, oh, I, I don't like it when you copy stuff over. You will see why in just a second. So in the data tutorial mod folder now, so we're going to close the Minecraft folder. So data tutorial mod, we create a new directory called loot underscore table, loot underscore table, and then the loot underscore table directory, another new directory called blocks. Very important once again, that this is written exactly correctly, data tutorial mod or your mod ID, loot underscore table blocks. And inside of there, we'll copy over the four JSON files, basically for all three or all four of our different blocks. That's going to be, as you can see in just a second, this is the pink garnet block, the pink garnet deep slate ore, the pink garnet ore, and the raw pink garnet block. Right, the normal ones look like this, and you could say, well, that's not too bad when it comes to contents, and I would tend to agree with you, you know, it's really not that crazy, and... However, the thing about it is that when you have blocks that literally drop themselves, this is always what they look like. This is basically the absolute normal loot table, and you literally just change the name right here of the block that you want to drop. Now, one note, of course, is that the names of these loot tables have to match the names of the blocks themselves. That is very important as well. And then there you go. That's literally all you need to do when you only want the blocks themselves to drop. Very straightforward. However, if you want anything more interesting, right, when it comes to the ore, for example, well, you will see this make it's a little bit more, right? So 51 lines over here. And of course, this is a little bit more complicated because what you have with this loot table is that you have actually two alternatives. The alternatives is, hey, do we have a matching tool with silk touch? Because if that's the case, then I actually want the pink garnet ore block to drop, right? Yeah, that is how ores work, right? When you have a silk touch, then you actually want the actual block to drop. However, if we do not have silk touch, well, then we simply want a raw pink garnet to drop. And we also do apply a fortune bonus if that is, you know, available, basically. Right, and that is still pretty fine, but then when it comes to the deep slate ore, we get a little bit deeper even still, where we still have alternatives, absolutely no worries, so, right, so with the silk touch, a deep slate ore block drops over here, that's fine, but then here we also have another function, and that is a set count function, where we say, hey, I actually want between two and five of the raw pink garnets to drop when I mine this particular block. Now, if you're sitting there and saying, this is incredibly crazy, I, I this is crazy complicated, number one, I actually agree with you, but number two, you can go once again to the best place on earth over here, the external libraries. I think that that's actually not quite right, right? I think that that's, uh, that's, uh, that's trademarked by Disney, right? It's not the best place on earth. This is the best place in the IntelliJ. How about that? But yeah, you can go to the external libraries under data, Minecraft, and here, loot underscore table, blocks, and once again, you have access to every single loot table in vanilla Minecraft for every block that exists. I cannot recommend enough to go through this, to understand it, to see, okay, how does this crazy stuff work? This is the best place to take a look at anything that has to do with any type of data JSON files that might exist. Right, now with those added in the correct folder, in the correct placement, right, everything has been vetted and double checked that, you know, there's no typo anywhere. Now we have everything we need, so let's jump into the game and actually see the block drops for the first time. All right, finally, back in Minecraft, and the first important thing to note, of course, is a switch to uh, to survival mode. <laughs> Otherwise, you're not going to be able to see this. Now, if I mine this, you can see this drops itself. Absolutely freaking fantastic, and that should actually also work with a wooden pickaxe. And we'll find absolutely it does. This one will not work, and you can see it already takes way too long. Usually, this is a good indication, but let's just go through, and you will find that it doesn't drop anything. However, as soon as I use the Iron pickaxe, it does work. This one will also work. However, it will not drop itself, but rather a raw pink garnet. And then this one will not work with the iron pickaxe because we've defined it to at least need diamond. And if I get it with diamond, you can see it actually dropped five raw pink garnets as well. There we go. And that is custom block drops, you know, done with loot tables. 
added to Minecraft. Friggin' awesome. As with all of the tutorials, all of the code and the JSON files are, of course, linked down below in the GitHub repository, so you can double check those as well. But that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about an advanced item. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.